Hello and welcome dear viewers to the video on bioequivalence study designs. So as we know that bioequivalence is of prime importance for generic formulations and also for the innovator formulations when the requirement is for lower strength and also for change in the formulation. So some bioequivalence study designs are there which are required to be understood and the study designs are based on the formulation characteristics and the drug molecule behavior in the pharmacokinetics. So first of all we will see what is reference product, test product. Reference product is a standard product or it is an approved product against which the test product is required to be studied or against which the required against which the test product is required to be compliant or in other words it is a product against which the test product is required to be compared now coming to the test product test product is the product for which the approval is required then bioequivalence bioequivalence in simple meaning is the property of the doses form or two doses forms with similar blood concentration levels. So if you co compare the two tablet formulations, reference formulation and the test formulation and when you can say that these are bioequivalent, when the rate of absorption and the extent of absorption of the test formulation is not much different or is not significantly different from the rate and absorption of the reference product. So rate of absorption is measured by Cmax and extent of absorption is measured by AUC that is area under the curve or in simple meaning AUC you can remember as it is the dose given and the dose absorbed. So it should be similar with the reference formulation and what is the B criteria when you can say that the bioequivalence is passing. The criteria is the 90% confidence interval for the geometric mean ratio of the PK parameters like Cmax and AUC. These are the two PK parameters mainly should lie within a range of 80 to 125%. So for calculation of the Cmax and AUC, the reference product is considered. The Cmax of reference versus Cmax of test, the AUC of reference versus AUC of test and the statistical calculations are done to get the confidence interval of 90% for the geometric mean ratio of AUC and Cmax and if it is within the range of 80 to 125 then you can say that the product is passing the bioequivalence. Now coming to the BE designs. So different designs are taken for the bioequivalence study and these designs are based on to the molecule behavior and the formulation type. So first is parallel design, then crossover design, then multiple dose study. It is also called as steady state design, then replicate design. And in replicate design, there are two types that is full replicate and another is partial replicate. So full replicate is two sequence four period design and partial, requ uh, partial replicate design is two sequence three period design. Then the adaptive designs. So these are different designs. If you know some other designs kindly comment in the comment box so that I will check those designs and study those designs also. Now crossover design. See crossover design is the most uh, preferred design for the generic formulations and for the inhibitor formulations for getting the bioequivalence done. So if you consider why inhibitor product is required to do the bioequivalence, see the inhibitor products are developed, they are dosed to the different population, patient populations and if that formulation is required to be changed a little bit for composition, process or site or in the batch size, then the bioequivalence is required to be proved. 
सो दैट मे बी प्रूव बेस्ड ऑन द बाइक्यूल स्टडीज और बेस्ड ऑन द डिजोल्यूशन स्टडीज बट जनरली द बाइक्यूल स्टडीज आर परफॉर्म बेस्ड ऑन द फॉर्मुलेशन रिक्वायरमेंट्स एंड द ड्रग मॉलिक्यूल बिहेवियर सो क्रॉस ओवर डिजाइन इज अ रैंडमाइज सिंगल डोज टू पीरियड टू सिक्वेंस क्रॉस ओवर स्टडी डिजाइन एंड इन दिस इफ यू टेक हंड्रेड सब्जेक्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू डिवाइड दो हंड्रेड सब्जेक्ट इन टू टू ग्रुप्स मेक अ ग्रुप ऑफ फिफ्टी पर्सन ग्रुप ए एंड मेक अ ग्रुप ऑफ फिफ्टी पर्सन ग्रुप बी सो ग्रुप ए एंड ग्रुप बी आर देयर नाउ ग्रुप ए विल रिसीव द टेस्ट फॉर्मुलेशन एंड ग्रुप बी विल रिसीव द रेफरेंस फॉर्मुलेशन देन इन द सेकेंड पीरियड आफ्टर अ वॉश आउट पीरियड सेकेंड पीरियड विल बी देयर एंड इन दैट पीरियड द डोज विल बी क्रॉस ओवर सो इफ इन पीरियड वन मेडिके ग्रुप वन हैज टेकन टेस्ट सो इन सेकेंड ग्रुप ए विल टेक रेफरेंस and vice versa so the intra subject variability and variability due to the subjects age or metabolism these are ruled out because each subject takes the test and the reference that's why crossover design provides the most sensitive conditions to detect differences in the rate and extent of absorption so this is the design which is preferred and generally crossover design is done for the formulations or drug molecules which have a half life of up to around 24 hours sometimes the molecules which have higher half life these are also tested but for those molecules if tested by crossover design truncated auc is done that is auc up to 72 hours is done so that is different part in this video only we will talk about the cross uh, di different designs so second design is parallel design and in this the whole subject number of subject will take uh, group suppose you have taken 100 subjects and you divide the subjects into two groups 50 subjects group a and 50 subject group b so cross over will not be there group a will receive test group b will receive reference and this will not be cross over the study will run in parallel in a parallel study two groups a and b are given so that one group receives only reference while the another group receives only test and this type of parallel design is less time consuming because it does not involve the washout period and it is suitable for the drugs which have long half life and long half life is considered as half life above 30 hours or more than that so if parallel design is there then washout period will not consume the time so parallel design will be completed in the less time compared to crossover designs now coming to steady state design so it is also known as multiple dose study it is known as steady state design see if the molecule has variability in the rate of absorption or if the molecule has variability in the bioavailability or if the molecule get accumulated into the body and very less amount of uh, uh, molecule or drug is available in in the plasma because of variation in the pharmacokinetics that time steady state pharmacokinetics are studied through steady state design also if a drug product is an er formulation that is extended release doses form for this type of formulations the steady state design is done and it is not if the study is not possible with the single dose that time multiple dose study is done crossover design and parallel design are the single dose studies and steady state is the multiple dose study in this study generally the doses are given till the steady state is achieved and now what is mean by the steady state so when we are keep on going the keep on going giving the 
doses to the patient or subject that time the body will get saturated uh, with the drug concentration level and then the rate of absorption will meet the rate of elimination or you can remember in sim sim simple uh, simple way that, uh, like that the 50 mg dose is there for the tablet formulation and whatever the dose is being absorbed that dose will be present inside the body that time you can say that the steady state is achieved so after achieving the steady state the formulations are tested or compared then replicate designs so replicate design means we are repeating the study and replicate designs are used for getting the average bioequivalence so these are of two types full replicate and partial replicate generally these replicate studies are done for the formulations or molecules which have variability variability in the absorption from subject to subject that is known as intra subject variability and when you can say that the formulation is variable when its intra subject variability is above 30% that is coefficient of variation that is cv is more than or equal to 30 percent and these replicate studies are required for getting the reference scaled average by equivalence in simple terminology you can remember like that if the formulation shows variability then you can estimate the variability of the reference versus your test so that you can scale the variation of reference that's why it is named as reference scaled average by equivalence two type of studies are there full replicate and partial replicate so full replicate involves two sequence four period study and partial replicate involves two sequence three period study so in full replicate I am saying that four period four period the meaning is that two times reference will be given and two times test will be given so if you are doing crossover study that time it will be done like that first group will take reference second group will take test then it will be reversed as test and reference so four periods will be there similarly in partial replicate three periods will be there and reference will be given two times and test will be given one time so these replicate designs are there for the formulations which show intra subject variability more than 30 percent then are the adaptive sample size sequential designs these are adaptive designs and adaptive designs means you can make the variation in the design or you can make the variation in the number of subjects and these things are required to be written down before starting the studies protocol based studies are done these are also known as stage designs these are pre-planned and protocol based and these studies are adaptive and adaptive nature means these studies involves the modification in sample size based on the results of the first study stage for the next stage for example you have 100 subjects and you are going to study the molecule or you are going to study the bioequivalence with 70 number of subjects and if you are getting the variability within the range within for the 70 subjects then you are not going to utilize the remaining 30 subjects and if you are outside the limit of variation with 70 number of subjects then you are going to perform the study with higher number of subjects or remaining 30 number of subjects so these are the adaptive designs these designs are mainly done for the molecules and formulations for which there is no data available or less data available for the pharmacokinetics or when the 
स्टडी परफॉर्मर और अप्लीकेंट डजेंट नो अबाउट द फार्माकोकाइनेटिक्स वेरिएबिलिटी ऑफ द मॉलिक्यूल सो इट इज डन फॉर द ड्रग्स विथ वेरिएबिलिटी इन फार्माकोकाइनेटिक पैरामीटर्स एंड फॉर द ड्रग्स फॉर विच द वेरिएबिलिटी इज अनोन और नॉट नोन सो दिस इज रिगार्डिंग द एडेप्टिव डिजाइन सिमिलरली दिस डिजाइन कैन बी make made a different for some of the formulations like you are testing uh, two formulations of test and uh, comparing it with uh, one formulation of reference so it will become three way crossover or four way crossover or you are doing some screening by parallel design and then you are going for a crossover design so it depends on the molecular understanding and the pharmacokinetic behavior of the molecule and the formulation some changes can be done but the final pivotal studies which are required to be submitted to regulatory bodies for getting the approval these are to be performed very critically and these are required to be performed as per the guidelines but if you are screening the formulations then you can take the design like parallel design instead of crossover so that you can save the time for performing the bioequal studies also sometimes the hasting state is only performed and failed state is not performed but the regulatory bodies ask for the failed study also that time during pivotal studies hasting and failed both are performed so it depends on the applicant and applicants knowledge regarding the molecule so this is regarding the bioequivalence designs i hope uh, i have covered different b designs and you might have got good learning out of this video see b design types and their implications are always asked in the interviews so whenever you are going for interview always have the good understanding of bioequivalence and this is why because bioequivalence is the key parameter for product approval so thanks for watching the video and let's meet soon with another such kind of informative video till then take care and bye bye thank you